Continue our special series, Kindness 101, with Steve yeah. Hartman. That's where we share stories that are built around themes of kindness and character and the people who have mastered those qualities. This morning's lesson is inclusion. And Steve and his kids show us sometimes you don't have to walk more than a few feet to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Good morning. This is my daughter, Meryl. Hi. And we welcome you to our lesson on... Inclusion. For a definition, let's turn to our resident linguist, Emmett. Inclusion is to not leave anyone out to make sure that everyone is included. Have you ever felt left out of anything? Once in pre-K, they were playing like kitchen, I think. Mm -hmm. And they said they had enough people. It felt like, oh, they don't want me. I'm not good enough. You ever had that feeling of it? Yeah, I have. It doesn't feel good. So you guys know how painful that can be. Fortunately, inclusion is a weapon against that. And if you want to harness this great power, you turn to the master of the craft, a young man whose story lives in our archive of amazing Americans, categorized under inclusion. When the lunch bell rings at Boca High in Boca Raton, Florida, 3,400 kids spill into the courtyard and split into their social groups. But not everyone gets included. Here at Boca High and at schools across the country, someone always sits alone. It's not a good feeling, like you're by yourself, and that's something I, w I don't want anybody to go through. Dennis Esteban is a Haitian immigrant. When he came here in first grade, he says he felt isolated, especially at lunch. Now he's a senior, he's popular, but he has not forgotten that first grade feeling. To me, it's like if we don't try and go make that change, who's gonna do it? So with some friends, Dennis started a club called We Dine Together. We Dine. Together. We Dine. Together. We Dine. Together. Their mission is to go into the courtyard at lunchtime to make sure no one is starving for company. Dennis. I'm new here. You're new here? When did you first come here? For new kids especially, this is a godsend. This is Gabriel. Gabe, how you doing? As a result of the club, He's Brazilian. hundreds of friendships have formed. Some very unlikely. You're probably meeting kids you never would meet on the football team. Ever. <laughs> Gene Max Maridu actually quit the football team, gave up all the perks that come with it, just so he could spend more time with this club. I don't, I don't mind not getting a football scholarship. This is what I really want to do. Just imagine how different your teenage years would have been. What's the name? If the coolest kids in school all of a sudden decided you mattered. We get to know each other better. It obviously takes a real devotion to inclusion to spend your lunch like this. Yes. Either that or first-hand experience. I went from coming from a school that I always had friends to coming to where I had nobody, so. Club member Ali Seeley transferred two years ago. She says with no one to sit next to, lunch can be the most excruciating part of the day. I think it's really unfair. It's honestly an issue. Meeting someone who actually cares and, li and listens to what you have to say really makes a difference. And that could happen at lunch, that could happen at our club. It's gonna make a difference. Yeah, I'll be around tomorrow if you wanna eat lunch together or something. It's been almost five years since we first told that story, and I'm really curious what Dennis is up to now. Hello, Dennis. Hi, Steve, good to see you again. Were you able to open other chapters of We Died Together? Right now, we are in over, I believe, 2,000 counties. What started in a high school cafeteria has swept the nation, has become a movement. I know this is your mission, but is it also your job now? Yeah, so full time, since we last spoke, see, I've really just been traveling. And the child that came to this country not being able to speak the language has now spoken all across the U.S. The child that couldn't even read or write is now in the process of writing a book to help people spread their own movements. People don't just get left out in high schools. They get left out in adult life, too. Are there lessons for those folks in what you're teaching? Yeah, Steve, I think the issue of loneliness and social isolation is something that we will continue to see at every stage of life. Whether you are 16 or you're 60, we have a responsibility to one another. You're changing a lot of lives and helped a lot of kids, so thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Steve, thank you so much. So I guess we need to always be on the lookout for the lonely, because sometimes all it takes is a hello to make the world a better place.
And with that, we say goodbye. And don't forget to stay kind. Um, we won't forget, Ms. Merrill. We won't awesome. forget. I love how she always gives us that charge at the end. You know, hello is always a good opening, but I don't know any child who's sitting alone that wants to be alone. Mm, nope. I, even if they look like no problem, I want to do this, but nobody wants to sit in a lunchroom alone. I can alone. recall the feelings from high school now. I, that happened to me, too, a couple of times. On the occasion, it doesn't you're feel not good. in the mix. For sure. Or, yes. Yeah. And Steve said it best at the end, be on the lookout for the lonely. And you yes. said you, you can't imagine a kid that wants to be... Adults, too. That's and I know it's hard for us to step outside our comfort zone, but maybe there's somebody you pass by on the bus, the subway, maybe having lunch that's sitting alone. Just say hi. If they say, don't bother me, I'm eating a sandwich, cool. You can walk away after that. <laughs> yes. If you yeah. say hi, you did your job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what a great piece. Like Always that. pulling at the heartstrings.